What's up friends? It's Tuesday and I normally have drum lessons so I stay at work, have drum lessons and then stay till rehearsal. But tonight I had a cancellation on one of my students so I have this magical thing called time to work and rehearse tonight. So I'm gonna get a little extra practice in which is a rarity recently um, before rehearsal. So we got a good set. This weekend we're doing a new song for us, BJ Putnam singing over me, um, Turn It Up. Um, sing a new song, Turn It Up, Singing Over Me and Speechless. So all pretty fun songs. Um, singing Over Me is a new one for us. Uh, I'm gonna try to add some stuff to some of the other songs because we've just done it a million times. So just to be fun and because I've got some time to work on it. So we'll see what I come up with. went well but my uh, camera died so I'm on my GoPro. I got the little G7X right there on my Avium and then this little light right here in case I need it so those little magic arms and then that longer articulating arm if you miss my other vlog so that's the setup. So yeah rehearsal's done. Be back on Sunday. So I came up here to get some last minute rehearsal in. Yes sir, hi. Travis up here doing the announcements. So I've talked about this rig before, but we got for the church a Canon C100 Mark I with the um, dual pixel AF upgrade. So this is actually an older generation, but it's still a beast of a camera. Takes the Canon E um, mount, or I guess EF mount. It's got built-in inputs. We've just put a little shotgun mic on it. So this thing crushes it for our announcement rig and we picked it up for like 1500 bucks or something. So anyways, I've got the main man here. No, this guy. We're gonna be getting some rehearsal in, but I caught some announcements. Praise God, the light. And an usher will gladly bring you one. If you're a guest, please fill out this card in its entirety. Every Connect card that's turned in this morning will activate a generous donation. The last day to register is October the 14th. Make sure you do it on the website, www.royalwood.church. So I'm up here at the church, it's Saturday night. Travis just left. We just filmed some announcements from the morning. Um, I'm actually doing some stuff for our student ministry, getting some things printed off, and I'm waiting for one more um, thing from someone to send in. So I'm just gonna get some more practice in while I'm here. And uh, I like coming in, you know, late Saturday, early Sunday. It's nice, it's quiet, got the whole place myself. So it's cool and I just get to enjoy the drums myself. So let me give you a little better tour of the platform.
So one quick thing I wanted to mention, um, you guys are really kind and say a lot of nice things about the way the kit sounds. And um, one thing, if you're playing at a church and your drums are in a cage, it's really going to be hard to have your drum sound as full and kind of open, obviously, as a, a kit that's open because drums have to breathe. So for instance, um, like if you're mixing uh, drums, for me, if I'm mixing drums, I start with my overheads and then build everything else up because I want that full just you know, um, sound of the kit and then bring in your close mics up to that. But if you're in a cage, a lot of times your overheads are really harsh and not kind of open and airy. And I'm putting in like our crowd response mic. So we have like microphones um, in the audience. So I mix those in. So when you hear my drums, like you're hearing like open drums in a big room, especially like stuff that's just me solo, you know, there's nothing else happening. And then at church even, I'll mix in those ambient mics. So um, I really have that set up like to my advantage. So your drums may sound just as good um, as what you think the sound that I'm getting, but because they're confined, they're in a cage or you're in a really small room or different mic setup, you know, you're not getting that full, um, you know, tone out of your kids. So just something to think about, um, you know, because I do get a lot of emails about that. Some people are like, oh, I can't get my drums to sound like that. I, no matter what I do, they don't sound that good. The snare sounds good. Or like, oh, it sounds great. And then I bring it up to the church. It sounds terrible. Just some things to keep in mind that, um, I do get a lot of sound that I like because I've got all these options. I'm mixing the room mics, overheads are nice and open, um, and the kit's open in a big room. So just something to think about. Um, obviously, you have to tune your kit, yes, but a lot of that sound that you like is due to the room that I'm in. So, Like for instance on the snare, I'm going to solo the different microphones for you. So I'm going to solo the top snare top, then the bottom overheads and then like the house so you can kind of see the different sounds that create the snare sound so here we go So real quick, and as I said, I'm probably going to do a longer real tuning video, but just my snare specifically, I don't really have a great answer for this is what I do to tune the snare as far as like a drum dial or this exact tension. When I put a snare head on, you know, I'm going to get it to like finger tight. So I'm going to tension it up until, you know, it's as tight as I can turn my fingers. And then I'm going to start there, you know, I'm going to start with like a quarter turn in a star pattern, you know, where I'm not, not just all the way around, but I'm keeping even tension. Um, quarter turn and then you know do another quarter turn until it, until it starts kind of getting a pitch and then I'm just gonna bring it up slowly I'm gonna kind of do a quarter turn here quarter turn there you know and just bring this whole snare jump till it gets to a place that I like now the bottom head I always no matter what I'm doing whether it's a really deep snare or whatever the bottom head is always going to be a medium tight tension because I want the relationship with the bottom head and those snares to always you know be the same I don't want I don't want a super loose bottom head and it messes with the way the snares interact with the bottom head. I want the snares to always kind of interact in that way. That way I can loosen the snares or tighten them up to really mess with those. But basically, I'm gonna find like a medium to tight um, complementing you know, tension for the bottom head. Now, again, there's no really exact science to it, I mean, other than just me showing you what I do and how I do it exactly, but when I go to change out the heads, I'll probably do a full length video. But yeah, this snare is like a medium tension, um, again, the bottom head and the bottom head so you can hear it's a lot higher but there are two notes that you know work together 
So I end up getting a nice medium to high, but yet real snappy, full body, but snappy, great, you know, play off the snares sound. drum dot on here but I, I'm running the snare pretty open I last time I had a um, vintage ambassador but I put a uh, vintage emperor on here so it's two ply so it's already a little more dead and then I you know I play with the uh, the internal muffling here and there sometimes I use them as I don't and um, then I've got like a small drum dot which is the smaller almost like moon jail type thing so that's how I achieve my snare sound um, for this snare again this is a 1967 Ludwig Superphonic so I like it. All right, got some good run-throughs and everything in. So, we'll be back here early in the morning. I'm not sure how early, but I think I'm gonna get here pretty early, get a jump on everything. So, see you back here bright and early. Good morning. It's Sunday morning now, it's 7.20. Um, just got through getting everything ready, making sure the tracks are good to go, and printing some stuff off. The rest of the crew should be rolling in here shortly. So, got a little bit of time to myself. service down um, it went well I um, ended up playing like a little bit of a simplified version of the fill that I've been working on I just felt like I may have been coming in hot you know on the very end so I kind of tightened it up at the very end and kind of led more into that down um, chorus or like intro section so but it was great worship was great preaching was great so about to get into second service Second service was great. Um, played, turn it up really straight for second service. Um, just kept it really close to the original, so I'll probably post a little bit of both of those. Um, but thank you guys for hanging out. I know it kind of added a lot of my practice. I actually got some practice time this week. Um, but man, give this video a like. If you're not subscribed already, subscribe. I got over 400 videos like this of different things. And then I've got links in the description below of all kinds of stuff that I use from cameras to clips and mounts and drum accessories. And all the mics are on this kit are in the description below if you're curious about what I'm using. Um, and hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next one.